name is Tanisha Morris, food blogger, recipe developer, content creator behind the Season Skillet. And today I'm going to be sharing a recipe that I love so very much. It's perfect for the holidays, but you can also enjoy it year round or at weddings. It is Jamaican black cake. And it's a recipe that you all have been asking for, a step-by-step, -step, a recipe run through, walk through, whatever you want to call it. And today is finally the day. So without further ado, let's get started. First things first, we're gonna start with our rum so fruit. That is the star of the black cake. So we're gonna use raisins, green glazed cherries, mixed peels, um, just a fruit blend, red glazed cherries and prunes. You can also use cranberries or any other dry fruits that you prefer, but this is what we're using today. And then you're gonna soak it in some Ray and Nephew, Ray and Nephew, white rum, and some red label wine. This is a classic, but there's so many other options that you can use. You can check out the blog if you want other alternatives. And if you are not alcoholic, you can also use like a grape, a grape, um, grape juice or non-alcoholic wine or alcohol removed wine. So that's what I'll be using today because there will be a video coming up with a non-alcoholic black cake um, that will be coming soon. All right, so in with the red cherries, I'm gonna layer them. We're gonna put it in hopefully real tight. In with the green. Raisins. This is what I just made. I'm gonna put this in the fridge to soak, um, and then I'll come back with another video using this recipe, using these fruits in a non-alcoholic black cake. We're gonna be using these rum soaked fruit. They've been soaking since last year, so they're well and ready for the recipe. So now we can get started with creaming our brown sugar and our butter. So we're going to add our butter, which is softened to room temperature, and our brown sugar to a bowl if you're using a hand mixer or the bowl of a stand mixer if you're using a stand mixer, which is my preference. And we're going to cream them together until they're light and fluffy around five to six minutes. Now that our butter and our sugar are creamed and set aside, we're gonna work on our eggs. So we're gonna add six to a bowl and we're gonna use a hand mixer to whisk until they're light yellow in color and foamy on top. If you don't have a hand mixer, you can use a whisk and just do it manually. So now that our butter and our sugar have been creamed, our eggs have been whisked, we are going to go in with our browning, our vanilla, and our molasses. We're gonna add it to the egg mixture, and then we're gonna add in our spices, so our cinnamon, our nutmeg, and our allspice, some lime zest, lime juice, as well as some salt and bacon powder. So first is browning. If you don't know what it is, it's just caramelized brown sugar. Um, there is a recipe on the blog, so if you can't find it in store, you can go to the blog and there's a full recipe there. You just need brown sugar and some patience. That's a good sound. And 
then our vanilla. Molasses. I prefer using fresh lime juice, but if you don't have fresh lime, you can definitely use the bottom kind. It'll cut the rawness, but also add a little bit of a zest, but you won't be able to taste it. But yeah, just don't worry, just put it in. We're gonna whisk on low speed. Our spices, bacon powder, and salt. So we're gonna puree our fruit. We're going to need two cups of pureed fruit. So not two cups of fruit in its whole state, but once it's pureed, we need two whole cups. So let's start. Fruit are in the blender cup. We're going to add in a quarter cup of red label wine and a quarter cup of white rum for a little, you know, rumminess. All right, so we're going to, next we're going to add our egg mixture into our butter sugar mixture. Then we're gonna add in our pureed fruit, our flour, and put it in the oven. Okay, so we're gonna do, we're gonna add in two cups of our fruit, fruit puree. That's a big word, fruit puree. We're going to add two cups of our fruit puree to the mixture, our flour to the mixture, then toss it in the oven. You know that one? No, no one knows that one. I just had a movie like that. Wait, what's the song? Is it the Monica song? <laughs> Woo! The last thing that goes into the cake mixture is the flour. We're going to gently fold it in and then we're going to transfer the mixture into our cake pan. Now that our cake mixture is combined, we're going to pour it into a buttered cake pan and we're gonna bake at 300 degrees for about an hour and a half to two hours. The time may vary, but you can always use a toothpick, insert it into 
the center and if it comes out clean, then your cake is ready. Now that our oven is at 300 degrees, it's time to bake. Nope, nope, what was that? <laughs> now that our oven is at 300 degrees, it's time to bake. I always add a secondary pan of water underneath so that it can keep the cake moist as it bakes. 